What is the kernel? What does it do? Why is it called that? Does it have something to do with the military rank? No, it has more to do with fruits and nuts. But don't worry, we'll clear all that up in this week's episode of The Android Power User. In the real world, the kernel is the softer, usually edible part of a seed or a nut that's contained within a hard outer shell. In computing, the kernel isn't that much different, though I wouldn't recommend you try and eat it. Think of it like popcorn. I love popcorn. You've got a popcorn kernel, and looking on that, if you try and eat it raw, you're probably going to chip a tooth. Not something I'd recommend, but with the right circumstances. In this case, the right amount of oil heated to the right temperature, you can release all of the goodness that's inside the kernel and you end up with something delicious. Throw on a little bit of butter, some salt, maybe some shredded cheddar cheese. Mmm, wonderful. But that's not what we're talking about today. This hasn't turned into a cooking show. We're still talking about Android. Well, and by extension, anything really that has a computer chip and an operating system with it. So what is it when you talk about kernels and computing? Let me tell you what Wikipedia says, and I'll read this just so I don't mess it up. The kernel is the main component of most computer operating systems. It's a bridge between applications and the actual data processing done at the hardware level. Okay, we got that. So it's a middleman. How does that have to do with a kernel like the inside of a nut? Well, the way to get at all of the hardware is done through the kernel. But the kernel, because you've got all kinds of stuff that may want to access that hardware, has to be protected. So it's got a hard outer shell on it, metaphorically speaking, that only allows specific stuff through, stuff that has the right level of permissions, as it were, to be able to penetrate that outer shell, get at the soft, gooey wonderfulness that's on the inside, and do all kinds of cool stuff. Well, if you've got the right APIs, if you've got the right programming hooks, you can do pretty much what you want, but you can't do it in an unsafe way. Now, it does all this through a process called abstraction. And in fact, the kernel can be considered an abstraction layer. In fact, the lowest level of abstraction layers. What does all that mean? Well, it's complicated computer lingo that essentially means if you want to talk to the camera, you talk to the camera. But you're not really talking to the camera. You're talking to an abstraction layer of the kernel that pretends like it's a camera to let you talk to the camera. So any of that makes sense? Essentially, you use the same type of commands that you would to talk to the camera, but by putting the kernel in place, you can have any number of different camera hardware on the far side. And if the kernel handles all of the camera activities and has a unified API on, well, the application side, see my hands here, application, kernel, camera. Well, if it's got the same APIs here in the middle, your app manufacturers, your app developers, just write once to talk to this fictitious camera that doesn't really exist, the kernel takes care of figuring out how to talk to the actual hardware, and it does it all for you. Abstraction, you gotta love it. It does a little bit more than just that. Say if you want to uh, run any old application. Plants vs. Zombies, let's say. Well, the kernel's going to set up it's nice little own uh, address space in RAM, in memory, so it can load up and, and just run. Now I'm oversimplifying things here a little bit, but stick with me. Plants vs. Zombies can now run inside that address space and nowhere else. If it tries to run someplace else, it's going to throw an exception. That means an error. But by doing that, it protects the entire system from programs doing things that they shouldn't do, things that they don't have permission to do that we don't want them to do, like viruses, like worms, like trojans, like all kinds of malicious software. But that's where the chink in the armor is. You see, we've already let this stuff into memory to execute. So you don't have to break into the kernel's hard outer shell. All you got to do is hijack one of these apps, piggyback your code, into 
the code that's running in the, uh, the memory address space that was already allocated by the kernel and now you can execute your malicious code right alongside with well, plants vs zombies. Not very cool, but that's the way a lot of this stuff gets through. So all of this sounds really, really complicated, right? Well, it is. And that's why you've got really, really smart people that develop kernels that help push everything forward without opening holes and gaps that could lead to problems that let regular developers write stuff that runs anywhere without a problem. But that in a nutshell, pun intended, is what the kernel is and what it does, why we've got it, why it's so important when we're talking about custom ROMs, when we're talking about overclocking and underclocking and doing all kinds of stuff with our hardware that it may not have been originally intended to do, <laughs> but that's not gonna stop us. Why? Because we're Android power users. But now it's your turn. Do you have questions, comments, want to add to the discussion, want to clarify any slight technical inaccuracies that came about because of the simplification of the topic? Please let us know in the comments over at pocketnow.com. If you're watching this video on YouTube, we'll have that link right down there. Just go ahead and click on that over to Pocket Now comments down at the bottom so that we can all learn and develop our minds and our understandings of these really cool tools that we use on a daily basis. Head on over there. If you like this video, if you like the series too, give it a big thumbs up. We'd really appreciate that. It helps share your uh, understanding and well, this video to other people who may not know all this stuff already. So please go ahead and do that. Big thumbs up. For Pocket Now, the Android Power user, I'm Joe Levi. Thanks for watching.